Hi, this is Dr. Scott Young, and today we're doing our post Nasara series. We've been talking about different areas that are going to change, and one of them is the documentaries that I believe that we need to bring out there. So we have Nick Alvear, and we're going to talk a lot about this in just a sec. So, Nick, how's it going, man? It's going good. Life is moving. Challenges are being uh, had and conquered in my life. It feels oh, that's good. awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I loved some of the stuff that you've been doing. I'm going to throw it on the bottom down here. <coughs> um, you can go to Good Lion TV uh, or dot TV and you can kind of sign up. Um, and it's a really reasonable subscription to do that. Um, there is a, a group of guys that are working something, you know, on Roku that you can kind of get, you know, that do some things. But there are little lots of different ways. And one of them is in Rumble as well. So you can see all these kinds of films that we're going to talk about. And he's got plenty more things. And so I just kind of want you to talk about, you know, the heart of your storytelling. Can you talk to people about that? Absolutely. Um, well, a movie is story is storytelling and and i guess the the heart of my storytelling comes from my parents i'm venezuelan i, I was born in south america i moved here on my first birthday and um just as a kid going to the grocery store and being there for two hours because my mom would see somebody and tell a story and it would be a long one but it would be captivating so this is kind of i was born into this uh, style of telling a story because I, I had a, a really powerful mom who could tell a good one. And um, just throughout time, uh, fortunately, I was able to get my hands on technology and start telling stories through visuals. And so I've been editing movies since I was like 12, 11, 12, um, with a camcorder and a PC with a VCR input in the back. And you could just, I just realized I'm going to plug it in and upload all my footage. So um, How hard the, is that to do the, the VCR? I mean, I just <laughs> took some tapes and I kind of popped them into like a ability to have those tapes, you know, like audiobooks. Yeah. But son of a gun, man, doing like the VCR ones. It's a different hard. world. Yeah, because you had to record while you played the, the content. So you would have to let the content play in. And at the same time, it's creating a digital version. And so, um, yeah, that was the obstacle. But back then it was the only way. So um, it, it was okay for the convention of just having patience. Um, and so now today, that's like archaic. But um, the heart of my storytelling today is basically what makes me want to even tell a story today is to share a truth that has been hidden or distorted. And when COVID began, March 12th, I got fired for really my political be beliefs. And um, I was getting exhausted from debating with people. Hey, this right. is going on. This is going on. And I'm thinking, even if I felt like I did a really good job um, persuading, oftentimes they would just be stuck with, don't confuse me with facts. I've already made up my mind. So I decided I could make a movie and not have to exhaust myself over and over again. It could just be played. And, and that's what I did. And it's, it took off. It, it, I, I was on unemployment when I started making movies. And by the time it ran out, I didn't want to stop. And I had enough supporters to propel me into what I do now. So yeah, like you mentioned earlier, we're going to talk about some films. I have them on goodlion.tv. There's an app as well, Good Lion TV on the app store and the Google Play store. Um, and on there, it's like you could go and enjoy it for free. You can sign up, create a free account and watch the thousands of documentaries and a few we're going to talk about today. Um, and then also you can support me and my mission if you want to get access to the 61 films I've made in the last four years. It, this has just been my life in the last four years and I feel like I'm just starting to create a life because it's, this is all I've been doing. So um, yeah, that's kind of like the core of what makes me tell the uh, story. Well, see, I you know, it's funny because 
Listen, I'm, I like to tell stories all the time too. I use analogy as I speak and teach, you know, with that too. I'm a teacher and a singer, even though my voice sounds like crud today, you know, with uh, just this <coughs> cough. <coughs> cough has been going on for a while. But I think one of the things that um, there are different types of mediums that, that affect people. And in this generation, while I write books, I think, um, movies actually captivate, and but I, I kind of branch it off in two different ways. We need to have documentaries and we need to have movies like historical fiction. Um, and we need to have those and almost immediately because, you know, the walls of, of the, of the cabal and the, and the stuff that they're doing, all that stuff is coming down in the EBS EAS kind of thing happening. And, and, you know, is that kind of something that, that God's been kind of loading into your, your body as well? I, I, I just have a little bit of goosebumps cause you're hitting it on the, on the, right on the nail. Um, when I started making movies, my vision for my future was to make narrative films. That's films that are screenplays that have something to say. Um, I never wanted to make documentaries, to be honest. When I went to school for film, I, I wanted production class. That's narrative filmmaking. And uh, all they had was documentary filmmaking. I thought, damn. Hmm. And I took that class and I made a cool documentary about how my parents met, but that was it. I, I was, it didn't bite me then. I didn't have this bug. And uh, I even went to a psychic once and she said, I see you going back and forth to DC and doing documentaries around the world. I thought I'm not political and I don't want to make documentaries. I wasted my money. And look where I am. I've gone back and forth to DC because of January 6th, I've gone to jail and I see myself right now ending probation, going around the world, making documentaries, but, but that's not where it ends. This is just the beginning. Um, my passion is in making feature films. That's the narrative filmmaking where you're telling a story, but I think God really wanted me to live a lot of life and to experience life through a lot of people that I've met along the way in the last four years. And so to make 61 documentaries, some long, some short, um, and to understand the world as it is at a deeper level than um, most of my life I've, I've not known is the fuel that'll go into the stories I end up writing screenplays for. So it's just going to evolve. And thankfully, I've met people along the way who see it. They go, you, I, we see what you're going to do. And they've become really dear to me. They become my friends, some best friends. And they're, they are the ones who are going to be investing in this evolution. So I don't say this in a cocky way. I say it in a way for those who do support me and are watching. It's going to be really exciting in the future to remember that you saw me just as an internet guy, a filmmaker on the web, and, and then you'll see me elsewhere and go, dang, I remember when he was calling the shot. And, and then that's just because that's where God wants me to go. And I'm really confident in that. Yeah, I mean, I think I think what's happening, and you know, we have I've been talking about this in a couple different ways, but we have, you know, in the truther community, we have people who are uh more of the reporter type. Um, they kind of the generalist in, in different ways that they're saying it. So they they kind of talk about different things. Sometimes they don't know about um every little topic that, that might come up, and then we have you know, real, you know, major um, content teachers and I kind of in that kind of area. But then we have people like you that, that you know, are are doing something. And, and what I believe is we're seeing a replacement because when you wipe out, you know, Hollywood, the media and government, you know, circumstances, what happens is there's a vacuum and, you know, the universe abhors the vacuum mm -hmm. and from a, from a physics standpoint with that too. And I believe that God is kind of placing that vacuum, replacing that vacuum, and he's already loading it in place. And so that's why, you know, when I was I was thinking about <clears throat> your best one here, personally, now I'm going to say it that way. You know, you don't have to feel that oh, way with it, too. I but, <laughs> the, the, you know, the greatest show on earth, guys, you <laughs> got to see it. Um, because I have so many people, you know, Derek and I have talked about this one. Um, and we've talked it through and, you know, I've had to, you know, kind of, I've done my military background, you know, quite a, not I'm in military, 
but I'm in a military historian kind of thing. Yeah. And if you don't know your history and you don't know why the history goes that way, you don't get what's going on. And, you know, that intersects from the financial sectors that I talk on as well. But when you realize what this, <clears throat> this particular movie is about, you are going to see something you haven't understood in a very long time or ever, maybe. And so would you talk a little about the story of, of this one? Absolutely. So this is also my favorite film. I made this in the summer of last year. At the same time, I was doing an academy teaching people how I make movies. That is an option. You can see it on my website. But um, for them, it was a treat because I got to make this film in front of them in the beginning. And, I, and they got to get teased in, um, in that sense. But this, this concept came from a few people. It, um, what I realized is sometimes when the public is talking about something, it's very difficult to spread it around if it's a difficult concept. And this one can be difficult to grasp because it is a lot of military jargon in a sense it, and political. You have executive orders that are being brought up um, and then and looked at today and being compared to would, would Biden actually be supporting these? It, there's a right. deeper message here in this film that is in essence pointing to Trump still being commander in chief. It doesn't necessarily mean president. They're both two different positions. Yeah. Um, and so under a uh, devolution, which implies this, here's the meat of it. Um, say that the government or uh, say that Trump realized, uh Oh, we have a lot of domestic terrorists in our, in our whole, um, in our government. How, how are we going to fight this war against technically ourselves and preserve the constitution? Well, we're going to have to create a very small group of people that we can trust and make a really big plan that's going to take some time in order to wipe out this cancer that's trying to kill the United States, basically. And in this film, you get to see every step along the way from the beginning of Trump's presidency, even further back, learning right. from, from acts from 1871. Um, it, it, a lot of people look at this movie like it's the a mecca of red pill to get you caught up to where we're at. And I, I do give credit to a few people, Charlie Freak, who, whatever you want to think about him. He did a podcast on this maybe two, three, four years ago, and he took that research that he did on the podcast from a woman. I don't remember her name, but um, I, that's how this happens. It, it trickles. And then all of a sudden, when I was, when I, I revisited that podcast and I thought, why hasn't anyone made this into a movie yet? It would be so much more packageable to and digestible to just, instead of watch this long podcast, watch, right. the, watch the movie. And it became, I remember in the middle of making it, in the way that I made it and decided to present so much information in a way that was very digestible. I knew, I knew it was going to go viral. I knew, and I was very careful. Like every night I exported it and I was like very nervous and it was, it was very strange because at the time I had let laid off an employee who was not good. He didn't like Trump and he was just very toxic and he was doing a smear campaign on me. So like I was battling this, this energy of being trying to, uh, this energy was trying to tug me down and then seeing that when it didn't and I made this film and it came out and and it just spread. It spread so much that um, I think that's how kind of how this realm works. When you're doing something that is a, of good, the darkness will try its hardest to, to sway you away. And so, and just in brief, that's a little motivation. Don't ever give oh, up. You know, what, whatever you're doing out there, if if you're if you have your heart in it, do not give up because that's when it gets harder when you're almost done. And so, yeah, Derek was a was a team player on this. I think everyone who knows Derek knows that it's impossible to contact him, even though he'll give you his number. It's he barely replies. But yeah. <laughs> throughout the process of this, I when I had questions, he would respond right away. And he came to the screening we had in Nashville. Um, yeah, so uh, got I got a lot of love for Derek. I ended up giving him an award, the first Lionel Award. We're doing a, a, a an award series every year when we do a, a, fe a festival like we did. And him and Lewis Herms got the first ones. I love those guys that, for, and, yeah. and what they've contributed. So if yeah, you, I mean, have, it, yeah, it, if you it, haven't seen it, this movie, you got to see it. 
it's real good. Be, it's really good because what it does, guys, for for you to understand, is that you know I had been hearing about this stuff back in 2013 about Trump, and I didn't I didn't believe it, you know. And I was hearing from my, you guys would call it white hat contact. I call it anti cabal, and I've been hearing it. And I was like, you mean the guy on TV, you know? And I barely knew anything about Trump at the time. And, you know, and I started learning about the military asking him to come on. And, you know, Derek and I were talking about it. We spent a lot of time spent uh, just, you know, cussing, discussing that one. And I think that this puts it in a package in roughly an hour, which I'm kind of surprised about that, that amount. Mm -hmm. um, because the point of devolution, guys, is what happened after trump is one day out of office you know in november what is it fifth or sixth that that happened in 2020 hmm. and and it it sets the stage up for what they had done before and so i think that's that's why i really am going to recommend that you kind of um guys take time and and have that up top of your your information and by the way my wife on my on our on our telegram channel you know this is one of the films that we kind of list out and we have several of them and nick's got several of those kinds of films and i go you know pick this one out pick this one out pick this one out these are things that you can you look at to get some some you know basis on on the red pill moment with that too so that's cool yeah. Um, now you have a new one and I know you wanted to talk about this and I want to share it um, a little bit, but I'd like to, do you want to introduce it a little bit or do you want to see the, the eight minute part? What would you rather? Um, I can introduce it and then we can do the eight minute. I can do a little quickie. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so everyone has been hearing about P Diddy in the news and honestly, I'm not a big fan of P Diddy and, um, making a movie about him really didn't at first appeal to me. So, um, but why did I decide to? Because P. Diddy is an icon in the music industry. And like you mentioned before, Scott, there's a lot of industries that are crumbling and we're going to start seeing them from financial to Hollywood to the music industry. And I believe this is the, one of the, the defining, uh, cards of the house of cards that will bring up down a lot of the music industry heads with it. Time will tell, but what we're seeing now with this lawsuit that P Diddy, um, has against him is some very dark things that would paint him as the Epstein of the music industry. And so so it is quite wow. a rabbit hole yeah like he has this massive mansion where he had very um a lot of sex parties a lot but every room i think there's 150 cameras and in, in, in total in, in throughout his whole house so he was spying and filming and but um what i wanted to do was make a two volume series volume one being the build-up into how could any of this even exist so it's barely about p diddy in volume one um and then volume two would cover the lawsuit and that will come out later next month um, because the lawsuit has all the details of what we're talking about. Um, it, a very innocent producer came along, was hired to do uh, an album and throughout the process w was drugged through a lot of nasty, disgusting attempts, um, attempts to make him uh, have sex with men, attempts to ha have him have sex with minors. Uh, the amount of drugs that were being uh, passed around, the guns that were being sold, the the shootings in the studio, like th the things he saw traumatized him and he took it to the next level and filed the lawsuit. But uh, wow. vo volume one is basically, though, nothing to do with that. It's it's everything that has to do with the making the bed that would allow this kind of thing to rest in it. And so that is you go back to Robert Johnson and selling your soul to the devil. You also go into sound frequency being used as a weapon. We go into the Tavistock Institute and how they socialize, uh, engineered so society through organizations like the prison for profit system, where they, they ended up hijacking hip hop, um, paying rappers to promote criminality. If you remember rap in the late eighties, early nineties, it was a little Will Smith. It wasn't too yeah. Yeah. thuggy. It was kind of like, it was a little more artsy and um, it then became uh, it almost um, a 
calling card for go get a gun, go do drugs, go shoot up this and that. And the reason being is they had this uh, intent to fill the prisons up to 90%. And the film covers all that and shows it. And so, yeah, I, I was really excited to bring it this way because I don't really like going into pervy woods. They're dark and I'm trying to move away from that. But unfortunately, the world is dark and oh we that's need true to learn yeah that, that's uh -huh. true i mean the the stuff on pervy wood is real difficult to watch uh, but you you need to spend some time in there let's watch it here and i do have a couple comments that are really i mean it it, it triggered in me a couple not in trigger bad way but triggered a good way to to be thinking about that we're gonna we're gonna get that word back to us with it too so let's check it out here turn up your volume a little bit if there if there's issues turn up your volume right now and we're gonna have it turned up as loud as we can I think it's, uh, I don't hear it anymore. Well, let's, let's, uh, pause for a second. Um, I'm going to remove us. It wouldn't work for us. Um, so, yeah. I mean, of course, it wouldn't work at the same time. Here, guys, I, I'm just gonna. Sorry, I'm gonna. I'm gonna pause that. We're, it's messing up with that too. This is not uncommon, unfortunately. I've been getting a few little things. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna tell you this. You can definitely see the eight minute one, and just go to Rumble. Okay, so it's the eight minute version of that. I'm sorry, I couldn't share it with you, but. I want to throw something out at you because related to this area, you were talking about, you know, uh, 432 versus 440 Hertz and yeah. changeover in there. Um, and, you know, when as an audiologist, I mean, I, I my study is in hearing, I mean, from the neck up anatomy, physiology, but what we also have to do is the science of sound. And also as a musician, I have nearly perfect pitch. And when I look at that kind of stuff, I haven't really gone in heavy on there. I've done some on it, but it's fascinating, guys, for you to realize that um, just a couple, uh, just a, a portion of it um, can be off by a few hertz. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain something here with you guys too. Most people won't understand. There's a thing called difference alignment. L i m e n s. And what that is, is the ability to hear one pitch or the other, or one loudness in another. It's called, it's called decibels. Okay. So a person that there is a range of, of different linemans that happens in the person who, you know, with, with any type of person. Now it doesn't always matter upon one's hearing loss, but it's also the ability to kind of process in more right brain information. And so what happens here is that if you have musicians, for instance, a person who has really cruddy difference linemans is someone maybe they get up and sing, you know, in a church or, you know, a, a different place. And they're like monotone. They're nasty when they sing. And everyone's like and, and you know, most people kind of catch it, but they don't know exactly what's going on. They, I mean, if especially if it's in a choir. Um, a person with a normal difference alignment, and so that's a person that has really bad difference alignments. Normal difference alignments, they would kind of know something's a little off. But you know, someone who has really narrow difference alignments, like me, um, I mean, if a, if a guitar mm -hmm. is even um, a quarter pitch off. I'm going to freak out. I want <laughs> to go to the head with the guitar, rip it out of your hands, retune it and give it back to you because, you know, and, and, and I mean, I listen to music very critically. I don't have a lot of music in my background. I'm going to tell you that 432 from 440 is within the difference alignment that you can't tell how you can tell it are the harmonics on top of that. And those harmonics that you have on top of that area is actually um, changing everything. 
and there's there's a form that comes out and the form is lost um, when you have the wrong set of harmonics. And that's so that's so cool. what happens. And it's and, and it's it's where we get, you know, when when someone is um, and I love to do this when I'm, I'll sing along with with songs and I'm listening to the third, the fifth. And I'm doing a lot of harmonies when I sing along with things. And sometimes I'm, I'm in a seventh, you know, on a minor seventh or whatever that might be. Um, and I'm, I'm changing those harmonies. I can just kind of hear them in there. Um, right. And most people don't hear that. But that's what this is, is making a disharmony in essence. Yeah. That. Wow. Great explanation. I'm with you on the guitar tuning. My mom is a, like a musical genius. And so I didn't really have to go to school to learn how to do anything. It's kind of in the DNA from just the lineage. And I'm seeing it with my daughter. She's seven and she's playing piano and making songs. And I'm no one's taught her anything. So right. it, it is cool. Um, but yeah, the frequency can be used as a weapon. And it took some Nazi scientists um, to figure that out. And then the world had a debate. Um, they figured what you would see in the clip that we would show that uh, we were going to show. Um, Sorry about a, that, guys. So. Oh, no worries. It, it leads into something better that I can explain. But sure. um, um, it's basically like the, the whole world was like, we need to have orchestras in the same tuning because if we don't, we can't really share the stage everywhere. We're going to have a lot of instruments kind of miscommunicating. It's not going to sound well. So they had to figure out what middle A was going to be tuned to for 40. 432 Paris France France was doing 432 Hertz already um, I think Japan had something different but um, they they settled on 440 and I think the Rockefellers had something to do with that sure. but but um, it's actually two weeks since I released this this movie and it was for members only for a while for those two weeks and so it's gonna be on good Lion TV free to watch for free is it cool if I share my screen real quick to show them how to get yeah, it please do. go ahead okay, cool. um, I'm gonna stop my screen share let you bring it up. All right. So here is the front of goodlion.tv. I'm just going to refresh it. Um, oh, yeah. There we go. Cool. Um, all right. Sweet. So just a quick thing here. If you sign up free up here in the corner, you can watch every single free film that we have. Um, there's thousands. And then if you want to become a member and get this area unlocked, you go and sign up for membership. There's some promos running. Um, but, okay, so under instant watch, the first thing that's on there you don't even need to have a membership. If you just want to get an idea of what Nick's films are like, um, well, there's two ways, instant watch and free good line films. There's about 10, um, but under instant watch, you will be able to watch the greatest show on earth. And then I, I did another film called the greatest fraud on earth. And that's just something that was a community service, so to speak. Um, but this is where you can watch. Um, I'll put the um, pervy wood, volume one of p diddy up on there most likely on the first of the first yeah. of uh june yeah or june well mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about some of these um i mean because when i look at you know as as a minor story myself i mean when i look at some of the historical documentaries that are out there right now and ones that really piss me off are like the the jfk kind of stuff i mean like no one wants to admit it you know and we even go back further in World War II, World War One, in the Fed, all these other kind of things. You know, what what is over? <coughs> is there something that is overall wrong inside of these historical documentaries we've all probably seen in the past? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> it's almost like schooling. It's almost like the school education system. When you get in there, they're going to teach you what they want you to know. So they're going to hide history according to how they want to and retell a story that is what they say his story history it's their version it's not the real one and so as you as i've grown up and i started to realize wait a second that could be the truth then why did they tell me that and that becomes the place where you sink or swim and some people like will will go further down the rabbit hole or some people will label it and think it's dangerous and never look at it again and because no one wants to realize that we've been lied to since we were kids. Right. Yeah. So that's like the crux of my work is to show that nothing is true, that everything has been a lie. And in a sense, that's not even an, an exaggeration. You can, no, you can yeah, not at all. You can look, every department, every sector of our existence has a some form of taintedness to it 
where the truth has been hidden. So like, for example, like, and then when they start doing that, you have um, movies like documentaries on World War One, World War Two, and then all of a sudden Spielberg starts making movies on World War One and Two, and then everyone keeps recycling this this idea or this false narrative into society. And it, so then it becomes harder to break free from what is from what is false and to realize what's true. Well, in this one, I mean, th no, this is a book I would really recommend people watch. I mean, read. Um, it's easier to list, uh, do a listen of the audiobook. He's got a really good audiobook reader. The Killing of Uncle Sam is talking right on what he's on what Nick is talking about. It's done by Rodney Howard Brown, a friend of mine in Florida, um, but it's a really well done, you know, historical document, and it goes through some of the military histories with that too. It's related in there. Uh, so. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I recommend too, it, when you go to goodlion.tv, there's a section on there under the free films. It's called the best films to watch. I named it very simply the best films to watch. You click on that. It'll take a little bit to load because it's, it, there's a lot of things on there, but what you'll see is, um, well, let me, let me clip, bring it up on the screen here. So at Goodlion, where, where would you look at that? Under free films. Okay. And then go to the best films to watch. And so this is kind of like my greatest hits collected out there from the movement of the last four years, some beyond, and and I put them all in one place. So I call it the Red Pill Cinema Plus. Oh, that at the top is just free good line films for you to watch. Um, right. I kind of put that. But if you scroll down a little bit, what you'll see is there's a selection. So you got Follow the Cabal. That's from Janet Osbard. Rest in peace. She passed away, but she left us with this phenomenal two-part series. It's a two two season series so there's like i don't right. know a total of 40 episodes plus but um there's on this page europa and also the greatest story never told and those go into and you can keep scrolling down i'll, I'll let the viewers know what it looks like Matthew buddha great guy um all right this one right here oh, is, europa. okay yeah so these two the adolf hitler one and the europa series um oh it's above it so these two oh it, this is just a mind blowing. What if, um, if you, if you can go in there with your mind open and accept what, or at least, um, take in what they're saying, it's going to blow the lid off of what you thought was true when it came to world war one, world war two. And, and then it makes sense of today. It makes sense why people make Trump look so bad. It makes sense of a lot of things. And I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still learning that the Civil War could have been completely botched to us and that Abraham Lincoln could have been an evil man. You know, could have been. Uh, it could have been. And they tell they tell you the history. They tell you history in a lie for a reason. And it's all about finding the reason so you can believe that it, 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 that it is true. Well, and, and that kind of leans me into what I want to bring up here next is something that I know <clears throat> some people want to say is like, for instance, on Adolf, that Adolf was a good guy and, you know, the allies were a bad guy. I would say it's a lot more complicated than that. Um, Adolf, we know for a fact, I mean, I have people that, you know, I mean, I, I've interviewed uh, the greatest generation all of my life. Um, I know for a fact what, what he did, but it doesn't mean that um, what he was doing, and he was trying to free the, the Germans off of a financial system. That's what he was accomplishing there, but he was doing it in his sicko, you know, satanic way. On the other side of it, we have, you know, the um, alliance um, at the time or the allies at the time who were um, pushing their cabal thing. So we got cabal and cabal going on in the middle yeah. of it. So I think it's <clears throat> more complicated when you think about other kinds of influences, what are out there? I mean, you kind of mentioned a couple, but what else are out there? Cabal influences in the uh, documentary uh, film industry. Yeah, man, that's a that's it. Right now in my work, I'm seeing the the cabal has found ways to use psychological operations in the sense that we trust a form of group, and then re later on we might realize that group was created specifically to infiltrate into a movement and to persuade us in a different direction than than what would happen naturally and sometimes it's a really sad thing to realize because 
they do it so well. So the cabal can come in the form of your friend. It can come in the form of a person who is in support of Trump. It, it, and how would we know? These are psyops. It's a real thing. And, and so on, on my mind lately, I've noticed that if I question something that creates a trigger in a community, what happens is a very reactive liberal type of um, explosion where I then get smear campaigned. And oh, yeah. For, yeah. yeah. For, I mean, it, it happens. You guys have no idea. I have this one guy was telling me, I want to be like a truther out there. I'm like, I was talking to Mark, Mark Z about this. And I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> you have, I mean, like, I have this one woman that told me, was like, a big story. I mean, she's a wonderful woman. Laura is, I love Laura. She, if you're watching, you can, uh, you know, but she was telling me about, I mean, some, some serious attack that she's gotten in as an audiologist. And it was like, you know, 20, 30 people. And I'm going, I get like 500 messages a week. And some people get, you, many people get a lot more than I do. And I mean, I mean, like a third to half of them can be, you know, like I hate your guts, and <laughs> and you just like you have to yeah. have like skin. Yeah. Oh, you do. You really do. I remember when I first started podcasting, and I'd have guests on, and I would see them go through a little bit of hatred and watch them crumble, and then I realized, wow. But that was at the beginning. I had no idea what it felt like to be hated until recently. Until I made a movie calling someone out, and since then, though, it really has made me develop a thick skin in a way that I really thought I had before, but <laughs> now I really get it because now it's very like it's every, it feels everywhere. But, it, but what happens in this kind of strange phenomena is that you see who has your back. You see right. who's been paying attention to you for a while. And then you also realize that the only people who believe the smear don't know you. And there might be something inside of them that they need something to hate because how could they allow themselves to hate something that they don't understand? And it's because it's not personal. It's, it's so I don't take it personal. And sometimes I laugh at these things. Right. Like I'm, I'm supposedly a federal agent because I went to January 6th and was let out after 45 days of jail. Right. I don't understand how that makes sense to anyone, but I understand people need something to hate in this world because it's frustrating. Nothing is panning out the way they want it to. Sure. And I question everything. And, and some people don't like that. Well, I mean, I do watch the what your what your research and like. Listen, I'm not going to agree with everyone. You're not going to agree with everyone. You're not going to agree with me on some things. You know, I think that we need to have like a core of going. You know what? That's the enemy. You know, these are the good guys. Let's not like get so wrapped up. We do know that there's infiltrators. You know that yeah. that's that's the case. But let's stop worrying about those infiltrators in many ways. I mean, they're there. They're there. They're there infecting us all the time. And and you can kind of tell by just a little research on this kind of stuff. And yet, <clears throat> when you look at some of the research you've done, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at going, uh, and I'm always critically looking at everything. I'm like, well, I don't agree with that maybe. But but I'm like, it's it's you want to have deep documentation. And I'm seeing that in there with that too. Right. That's exactly what, that's all I could wish for, for my audience. And I almost wanted to stop making documentaries when the audience I was seeing, not particularly mine, but the audience that I was looking at, they weren't actually questioning um, with any discernment. They just yeah. wanted to believe what fit their narrative. So right. if there was a picture of this guy next to this guy and it fit their comfort, they would just make it make sense. And I started to think, how are we like this? We should not be like this. This is too gullible. We need to be questioning and have receipts and get to a, a conclusion that was hard earned and not just free and outsourcing our thinking to other people. It's lazy. And I get it. This is not the most comfortable time to be alive. People are working way too much and everything is w costing way too much. A lot of people aren't even working at all. It, things suck in, in a relative sense in this world mm -hmm. right now. So people don't have time to research all day. So they do have to go to who they like mm -hmm. in order to take what they have to say and run with right. it. 
right. just wish it was a little different where people put a little more time before they started to be so passionate about an opinion that they might not even know anything really about. <laughs> well, and then I think, I think that's a really powerful point and it leans me to this one. I mean, you know, the, the Titanic and the fed, and I speak on this in my Nassar explained, you know, series, the three part one with that too, but these two things, I mean, for, first off, I believe the Titanic is the first and major false flag, you know, of, of an epic proportion. And it sets up the Fed. Um, you know, I'm just going to load in you. I don't know if you've thought about this. <clears throat> I don't have a clue. But God, would I love to see some some cool videos on that. That yeah, it would be a, it would be a great film. You're right. It would because it's the beginning of the Fed. You know that this would make a great intro into a larger film, or it could be a film on the the psyop on the yeah, because that was big. It uh, and and really, it's before the greatest generation. I mean, so this generation that that were there, this is in what we would call um, the Romantic era, and at that time frame, when you have eighteen, okay, eighteen seventy one is the new constitution that they changed. This is post-Civil um, War. And they changed the constitution. When you look at what they did to the constitution, as an English, one of my degrees is in English, and when I read the bill, and I have it somewhere in there, but when you read the bill and you go through it, it's like, wait, where are all the things that, that said that they changed things? All they did is they changed um, prepositions and, and just little adverbs and adjectives. And it was pointing a direction away from, and the best way to put it is that a constitution for the United States versus a constitution of the United States. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's that beginning point. And the Fed is that, is that area because at that time frame. They, we have Darwin that that comes up in the eight, you know 1880s, 1890s. We have that that kind of that kind of thought, and we thought it was like the new thing. We were throwing off all the old mores, and yet we were actually putting on a like a cloak that was really really ugly, mm -hmm. satanic. Mm -hmm. With that too, I don't know yeah. if you have any other thought on there too. It's what launched us into a modern day slavery where no one knew it. Like the the Matrix, as as the Wachowski brothers made it, it, it is like that. People are being used as a battery, energy, money, and they don't even know it. So that was, in, in a sense, the beginning. And yeah, I think a movie should be made about that. Um, there was an idea I had once for a film that would just be called Red Pill. And it would be the the top five most defining moments of, I guess, a conspiracy that changed history and the future. That would go in there for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think I think a lot of those do. Now, I mean, <clears throat> I'm gonna throw this out at you. Um, I don't know if you have a feeling on this. Do we look at the historical American wars more specifically in the 20th century, the first and second war? Um, does that have a role, do you think, in um, where we are today in the wrong direction? Those wars being the uh -huh. reason why we're here where we're, where we're at? Right. Uh, yeah. Abs but do, how do you retell it is the challenge it, because you're going to be exposing a lot. So I think you can retell it once the old system is gone and right. you can explain why it had to go and how those wars dug us further into this hole. Um, the reliance on the banking systems, the it, it's, it's really been unfortunate that that is one of the greatest money making um, businesses or uh, adventures is war. How much does a country or a government care for you? If when they need money, they go to war. Like, well, I mean, it, it's actually predicted in the word um, in Matthew 24, you know, we have, um, you know, the, the disciples are walking around the, the temple and they say, you know, this is all cool. Look at this, man. And, you know, like, when are you going to come back and do your thing? Because they were expecting what's called, we would think of as the second coming. And Jesus looks over him and he goes, every single stone you see here, it's going to be down to the bare minimum. And we're going to go down to the foundation. 
And they were like, no, that blows my mind. And that happened in 70 AD. But he says a really interesting statement. There are going to be wars and rumors of wars. And when you go into the Greek of that, it rumors means a reporting on war. Mm. And when you, when you understand that level of this, we need to change how we looked at that. Um, cause the rumor part doesn't mean truth and the reporting part. And we didn't see a lot of that until world war two, when we had Ernie pile, or I think it was Ernie pile or, or, uh, pile blanket is his first name. And, you know, he, you know, was, was that embedded reporter. And we started seeing that in, you know, a little bit more in Korea and a little bit more in Vietnam with that too. And that has changed just a subtle way of changing that narrative too. Right. <clears throat> yeah, that's deep. I do hope there comes a time where we can retell um, the, if, I think the pendulums always swing and there's books written on it. So there's a pendulum that swings for 60 years one way and then it swings another. And, and at some point we're going to see that with, with Hollywood, with movies that were made. Right, right now, it seems like Hollywood has been hijacked by China. There's some um, documentaries on that. Um, but there will come a time where there will be a Spielberg of red pill information where you can watch the truth, but behind a massive budget that tells it so everyone will enjoy it. So those times look exciting. In a way, Good Lion TV and Good Lion Films the future for good line films is creating a Noah's Ark of, of a sort where people who are in Hollywood who don't want to be affiliated with the satanic aspect of, of control can go somewhere and work and do what they love. And there's going to be a bunch of those arcs. Oh, um, there's going to, we're going to need a bunch of good lines. I mean, I, you know, Nick's going to have his area. You know, we had um, Mary Crowley who's got her destiny studios I mean, she's going to do another thing. We need to have many visions because we're we're ripping out the foundations in essence with that too. Exactly. Um, yeah. um my my other thought too. Um, are there other patriot stories that need to be retold? Um, are, are there things that you kind of look at, at, you know, in other areas of history or situations? And you kind of mentioned with the Tartaria kind of series. Is there other kind of? Are there other kind of areas you're looking at? Yeah, I was talking to a friend of mine who I um, credit for waking me up when I worked with him in 2016. I was a network engineer, went to school for computer network engineering. I wrote some notes on it, and I just I don't I don't want to butcher it, but um, it's basically uh, it's it has to do with the Civil War and who the real patriots were, and oh. it, it definitely wasn't the Union, and so. In, in painting that, um, it, it kind of ties into a lot of things. Like, I am a January Sixer, and we're made to look like terrorists. And for those who stand up to a corrupt system that's doing the worst that they could ever do um, and being made to look like you are the bad guy, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's fair to tell the right story eventually because they're just going to keep putting that in the history books. And at some point, uh, it would be nice for the truth to be in history books, because at some point, January 6th, if not already, is going to be in history books. And we're until a greater force redefines what ha happened, we'll be in there as terrorists. <laughs> and that's, is, that's really insane. sad because something's been rolling around in my head. I'm going to throw this out at you. Um, I, I didn't prepare you for this, but I was just, I'm just thinking this one. Something's been bugging me for a while. Um, when you go back in JFK's murder, and I've spent just years, and that's really my time frame in 92 when I was going to uh, the book school depository. And I would go to, I've been it to it like six, eight, 10 times. I don't even know the number. Um, and each time I would, I, I would be thinking about something a little different in there. One of the more <coughs> recent conversations have been kind of rolling around my brain is one of the most doctored photos of 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 uh, Lee Harvey. He's got a, a Carcano rifle with him, and he's got a newspaper, you know. And the the it, it's 
from a you know it's before we had cgi and you would you know take your your exacto knife and you would kind of you know load on a a person onto a screen or an area and then that's how they would do their stuff and and the shadows are all wrong and anyone's mm -hmm. looked at it the shadows are very wrong what mm -hmm. we know about oswald is there were multiple oswalds all over the place in in dallas and one of the possibilities in this and we know that um you know poppy bush um, president old president bush was there because we know that he was outside the book school depository um so that's all also part of the killing but guess who is a potential joe biden might have been in that picture Whoa. and he might have been in that and i'm i'm throwing this out at people and i i tell you what you can't get me to stop when i go what if joe biden and i could be wrong I, i'm okay you can do this what if joe biden <laughs> was the lee harvey oswald and his reward comes up Whoa. to now wow yeah the long game the long haul I could see it and yeah if you've seen how how did he end up in so many how was he involved in politics for so long even after being crushed in 88 89 for being a plagiarizer for just lying playing out lying again and again how do they keep surviving in this political realm favors money <coughs> well and i mean we know this very clearly i mean there there are people that will get into politics and they will kind of wade in. I mean, the cabal kind of wades in with you, you know, gives you money. They will say, you know, you you owe us back for the campaign. Um, there's some videos that talk about, you know, that they walk into Congress and and they go, you owe us two hundred thousand dollars for us to get uh, to get in the office. Um, and then they kind of say, well, you need to vote here, you need to vote there. And each night, I have talked to people, you know, who were in Congress or in Senate. And each night is another little party and they're looking to see what your vices are. And the deeper your vices go, the deeper that you go. And obviously we get into, you know, the, the really ugly stuff that Purviewood gives a huge, huge story on is the child trafficking that happens. And that's when you move into the upper ranks. And we know that, I mean, Joe Biden is such a nutty figure. Um, he doesn't fit, you know, any of the capabilities. I mean, we know that he was given um, to to the Democratic Party and said, "This is who you're going to put up as as the uh, as, as your savior to beat Trump." And I'm like, going, "There's a bunch of other better people you could have done at that time frame. Tulsi Gabbard would have been a thousand times better." Or you know, I call her Hi Hiawatha Warren. Um, <laughs> she would have been fine to put up there, but, you know, to have idiot Joe, and mm -hmm. that isn't even the real one, uh, you know, it's just actor after actor inside of there. I mean, and, and when you realize that, you know, along with that little Biden thing, um, JFK actually had 17 actors that played him, you know, mm -hmm. so you're going, wait a second hold on a little bit you know i i just think that I, I would love to see what you know people like you would kind of play with that as you were kind of moving that area sorry giving yeah. you a little one there but that's good now you're planting seeds this is i like gardening <laughs> yeah and i think that's and i think that's something that we need to do and i'm not saying you know on on the biden thing with uh, lee harvey it's just that that could be right it could be wrong i'm, I'm not worried about that particular thing yet because right. we don't have enough information yet to see that. Right. And it, it kind of reminds me of some politicians today who, if they get called out for something, because AI is a prominent force in today's creative world, people like specific politicians, I won't put throw any names out, they'll just immediately go to, that's AI. And even audio recordings, that's AI. Like that's what they go to right away. And for some people who believe in this politician, that's enough for them to go, whew, they're not even going to go look into it. So it works sadly, but oftentimes if 
there's ways to tell if something's AI or not, which is cool um, because you can challenge somebody on this claim, but usually it's in the fingers. AI likes to make more than five or, oh, yeah. or it makes, yeah, or it have makes all that up. fingers or toes. You, you yeah. see that as well. It's like right. a dream. When you're dreaming and you try and look at a clock uh, and the numbers, you're not going to get a time. It's a very weird, fuzzy thing. Um, so same thing with AI and hands and toes. And if it's a picture from far back, uh, I've had people send me photos and it looked like this wicked Tartaria thing with a huge skull and a bunch of people. But if you just zoom up into the heads of those people, they're, they aren't heads. They're yeah. just weird open mouths and weird figures. So. Right. Yeah, just a little bit of discernment goes a long way. That's that's all I wish for my audience is to have the confidence to do a couple of steps of research before repeating anything. It will make the world of information a lot smart, smarter and cleaner and and just less dense. It'll be more pure. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a plenty there's plenty of ways for, you know, patriots to be able to, you know, help you out, you know, on on your channels, on your circumstances, following them on you know on Telegram. I didn't have it up there, um, but you know, guys, that that's the kind of way. I mean, because because Nick needs this too. I mean, Nick needs people to kind of come by and say, "Hey, what have you thought about?" And he might be like, "You know, I hadn't thought about that one," or "That's a good piece of information with that too." Being that research, because guess what? That might be what God's kind of putting in you right now is to be that researcher. I mean, I have plenty of them coming to me and giving me some information. It helps me kind of move forward too. And I'm, I'm sure you have those kind of people as well. Oh yeah. You, and I invite it. it. Also, if you want a membership to goodlion.tv and you can't afford it, I give free memberships out all the time. You just create a free account and then email me, nick at goodlion.tv and, and just let me know, like maybe that you heard it, heard it here on the show. Send me the email that you used to create a free account. That way I can upgrade it for you. Um, but yeah. Um, and I, I think there's, I think there's a real strong possibility for that, that kind of stuff. We're, we're going to see some capability of, of being able to handle um, amazing capabilities to, to be able to put stuff on film. We're going to have, it, it's not going to cost as much as you think it is. I mean, in the, as in the past, uh, because when we move into a gold back currency, things are going to get less expensive for us uh, with that. But, you know, realize almost all of us are, are sitting here going, man, I don't have the resources to be able to do that. And so I think that that can make a difference in your life too. Right. Right. Big time. And just to piggyback what you said before, you, anyone can email me with any idea or what ifs, because truly I've had people text me, send me emails, and it has ignited me enough to make a movie. So it does happen. And it, it's a pretty cool feeling to where you can, your your time spent researching and thinking could, could become something greater that affects a lot of people. Like, like Derek Johnson and his research with the greatest show on earth. Like a lot of people tried watching his TikToks and they knew some truth was being said. They just, he talks fast and he's saying a lot of big words. I had to watch his stuff like about 50 times, all of his videos on TikTok, 50 times trans transcribing everything. And, right. and that's how the movie was born was understanding everything he was saying, reading his documents on his website. So I invite anyone to reach out 100% email. Yeah. And, and definitely go in there and follow. Um, you know, I, I know this for a fact. I mean, it happens to me. I mean, we got 43,000 uh, followers on uh, the Rumble channel here, but you got, I mean, on the greatest show on earth, you guys had 1.72 million views. Like that doesn't match. You know, I, I still go, that isn't matching that number. I mean, we should have seen, and I know you don't have, you know, every video gets seen that much, obviously. But when you do the, the calculus in there, and I do that on my YouTube channel, I see this a lot. Um, I know on my YouTube channel, they steal, you know, subscribers, they steal views, they steal all kinds of stuff uh, with that. So I really recommend you go on and just follow. That's the first step out there. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I also do podcasts on there weekly now. Um, but yeah, that movie, 
there are so many other bigger channels that played it. They reached out. They said, hey, can we have you on here just to introduce the movie before we play it? And I loved that. That was really generous of almost everyone who did it. Um, but total, maybe 20 million views is what we're thinking. Um, really? Good Line TV, yeah. Good Line TV had a good weekend. We had it only on there for the weekend, and Derek promoted it. It was super helpful. A lot of people became members. Um, and then – I honestly wanted it on Good Line TV for longer. But before I realized it, people had already ripped it off the website and right. put it on Rumble. And I thought, how did they do that? And um, and so then I put it on Rumble. And uh, yeah, it was pretty mind-blowing to see people. It's it's the greatest movie I've ever made. <laughs> yeah. And maybe, I don't know, I'm not going to say ever will make, but it was so needed and is needed. People cry when they watch it. People tell me they've watched it five times. It's the movie they share with everyone in their family. It's a really good movie. Uh, the soundtrack yeah. is every great track you've ever heard from classic rock hits from the 70s. And I did notice uh, that too. That was pretty cool. Yeah, those are my favorite songs. I'm a 70s guy, even though I was born in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome, man. So guys, I just, I recommend as we kind of come, you know, into the, into the Nassar time frame, And I always say post Nassar because guys see yourself down the road. I mean, faith is the way that we communicate with God and that's how he communicates back and forth. He doesn't, you know, I mean, he's outside of time and when he looks in time, he's going, this has already happened in, mm. in his circumstance. And, and when you see it that, that way, you have a, a different vision. I mean, it's kind of like you were a time traveler and you went back in time and you're telling, you're talking to the people, the framers of the constitution, what would happen is you're going, well, yeah, you did it. I mean, you know, Ben Franklin got, you know, um, went to Paris and he, you know, got the accords to go <clears throat> so that America could, you know, eventually win the war. And now there's a lot of issues you know, without historical kind of stuff that changes. But, you know, we would look at it that way. Well, God looks at that and see, has seen everything that's ever happened. And I just would recommend that you kind of have stop inside of your expectations and move outside of that. And I think that's when you watch, you know, Great Show on Earth, it will help you kind of have a perspective that will give you a difference with that too. Heck yeah. Uh, facts. 100%. I encourage everyone to um, get it and share it. Watch it, share it. And then you don't have to believe everything. But it's going to be kind of difficult to not because it's all historical. It's all documentable. Like you can go and reference everything that's in there. So yeah, we're this is a good time if you haven't seen it to watch it because we are almost at the end of the beginning. Right. And so new things are going to start happening and it's just, it's just that time. It's election yeah. year. And, there is and the work be a is new beginning. And, and the work is only beginning guys. When, when the Nassara thing happens, when we have the EBS happening, the work be really begins. And that's what you need to be at. I know you're tired, but that's when the good work is going to happen. So thanks so much, Nick. I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. Thanks for having All me right. on. This was, this is great. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. See ya.